Hi, thank you for joining me in the episode of Chad Sports Talk. My name's Chad with Dive in the World Sports. On this episode, we go over the weekend fiascos and gut-wrenching and exciting matchups we had on Saturday and Sunday with the college football and the NFL. So we'll dive in by far about five aspects of each day. And let's begin our journey with the college football from Saturday. From Saturday. There was a lot of key matchups. The number one, I think, on everyone's radar there was the Oregon Ducks going into Columbus, Ohio and beating the Buckeyes. I don't think anyone saw this one coming. Everyone thought Ohio State would be definitely one of those top four teams that could probably remain undefeated. And not so much. Um, I think part of possibly their Big Ten um, supremacy may be challenged this year with Penn State and Iowa right now playing very good and so we'll come see it's still early in the college football so it's only one loss and the Ducks win the, win the Pac-12 it actually bodes well for Ohio State and vice versa for Oregon if Ohio State wins the Big Ten title it bodes well for Oregon as well so not too much to take on this one but definitely you know one of those that kind of surprise the football world seeing that you know the Pac-12 is alive and well and still a force to be working with with Oregon and UCLA being up there up top. Another one that surprised everyone was Jacksonville State going to Tallahassee and winning on a Hail Mary basically to knock off the Knolls. It's the first time Florida State's lost to an SCS program since the split of Division One to 1A, 1AA. And what does that say about Florida State? I mean, they went toe to toe with another dame and took them to overtime only to lose. But they turn around and lose to Jacksonville State. So it's a conundrum with that one as well. But like I said, it's still early, but losing to the FCS program is really going to put a mark on Florida State's resume, if, even if they went out the rest of the year. It's just. They're 0 2. That, that, that win that lost to Notre Dame. You know, so, someone helps, but losing Jacksonville State at home, yeah, you might as well keep Florida State out of the uh, college football playoffs, I think. Even though they look like a much improved team, but yeah, they got a lot to come, overcome from that one. And speaking of Notre Dame, for some reason, Colorado disregard Toledo put was just taking it to the Irish and it had to be a late fourth quarter comeback from Notre Dame to get it and the scary part is when you had Jake Cohn just looking at a finger goes to the coach he puts it back in place and the SLB throws a, a game winning touchdown I mean now let that lets you know the toughness of this quarterback and the grittiness of this team now to kind of come back tw two times in a row. But being a cardiac special in football, you're not going to bode well, and you will end up falling flat here shortly. And I'm just not hoping that they're not going to do it anytime soon, but the way the Irish are playing, who knows? Especially when you got still worse of Purdue, Wisconsin, Cincinnati coming up. If they keep doing this, these fiascos, they're going to find themselves in a hole pretty quick. Another one of those neat matchups that uh, no one saw the results. Uh, the way they went was an old Southwest rivalry game between Texas and Arkansas. An SEC preview game. And the Hog took care of the Horns quite handedly. Is this something that both Texas and Oklahoma now have to fear that now any SEC school is going to just mop the floor with them? It, it's hard to tell. I mean, maybe Arkansas is that better. Maybe Texas is nowhere close to being where we thought they might be. But still, again, still early in the season, so it's hard to kind of determine how this is going to play out later on down the road. Uh, once again, it kind of depends on how these teams kind of face, you know, in the towards the end of the year, how it affects them in certain standings, especially for like New Year's Six bids and whatnot. But I think as long as Arkansas has still a winning record and Texas goes on and wins the Big 12, it should bode well for Texas. Um, 
However, if Arkansas just pretty much tanks the rest of the season and just hangs their hat on that one one game against Texas and say, hey, we took care of the horns when we had to. That's it, it's hard, hard to determine. And another team that kind of struggled on the road and one that should have won handily was A&M. Went into Boulder, Colorado and just pretty much collapsed. The Buffs took it to them. However, there was no offense from the Buffs. They only got three points. And it was like 3-3 game pretty much throughout the game until a late fourth quarter run by the backup quarterback before A&M actually won. So does that bode well for A&M? Or does it bode well for Colorado? Does it really say that Pac-12 is not really dead? They're just kind of treading water right now with the water level pretty much coming up to the nose. Who knows? Because if you look at the other Pac-12 games this weekend, some big Star Wars, Stanford avenged their loss to Nevada and went into USC and took it to the Trojans. I mean, that's just unheard of. I mean, USC just not be able to stop Stanford to save them one, one iota. And then Utah going to BYU in their Civil War and just pretty much fall flat there as BYU easily replace Zach Wilson and striking hard and fast again, making their claim that they deserve that Big 12 you know, nomination. So those are kind of some of the big takeaways from this weekend on college football. On a lighter side, in case you might have missed it, with the incident down with the uh, cat down the my Appalachian State Miami game down there in Miami Gardens, somehow the cat was got up on the canopy on the very top Hanging by a claw. The fans were there, of course, wearing flags for their 9 11, you know, memorials and tributes. Was able to catch the cat when it fell in an American flag and the cat was taken to safety. And in case you don't know, the cat was safe. Taking him to the vet staff and to make sure that the cat was all right. So, kind of, you know, a little excitement there in the Miami game. Besides what was on the field where they barely got past App State. So. Now on the Sunday, with the big boys, NFL going up, and you had uh, Mac Jones making his NFL debut, Trevor Lawrence making his NFL debut at quarterback. And speaking of Trevor Lawrence, Houston is going to Sean Hill. Deshaun Watson's still sitting out. They don't even. They demolished Jacksonville. Lovey Smith's got that defense just running amok like he – Back in the day. And Tyra Taylor is just was just lighting it up. And it's just the Houston's found an identity I didn't think they would find. I think they would just had a trip you know, dumpster fire this year. Um because you look at the rest of the AFC South, they're the only one that won. Because Tennessee and Chandler Jones of the Arizona Cardinals manhandled Tannehill and got blown out by the Cardinals and then the Colts you know Carson wants his experiment and I told you it'll be some games where it's just nothing's going to work and Seattle proved that so you know just kind of some of the things you got to look at and then you look on another one and who dat James Whiston lit up the Green Bay Packers and blew them out in Jacksonville. Now, I mean, it was not even close, and he was just throwing bombs. Now, it's been known that he does have the arm, better arm strength than Drew Brees, and taking that year under his tutelage to help him fine tune his mechanics, and also being under Peyton's tutelage as well as a head coach. I don't know. The Saints could be trouble in, in the NFC South, and just I don't know. I don't know. That was like the worst game Aaron Rodgers probably had. But just watch out. He's Aaron Rodgers will remember this game. And if they do meet again, it will not be the same feat. And, and listen to uh watching Get Up this morning and, and Brian Clark actually, you know, kind of threw out the name Steven Seagal and kinda of made me chuckle because 
as soon as he said, said that, I very much went on Twitter and put it out there. It's like, hey, you know, RC made Aaron Rodgers sound like a steam goal. Hashtag. He was definitely was under siege by this Saints defense. So it would be funny to see how Aaron Rodgers reacts to this, but I guarantee it he will not have the same performance again like that. Definitely not two weeks in a row. So he will definitely torch the next team he's going to come across. I mean, next week, Aaron Rodgers will take on Detroit Lions on Monday night. Um, Detroit Lions, main, that's not about the exact same team, even though Jer- Jeff Goff's there. But they made a good comeback against the 49ers a little bit too late. But, you know, that's might be the same thing. So, But I expect Aaron Rodgers to pretty much declaw the Lions. And speaking of other uh, NFC North teams, the Chicago Bears just got manhandled in Los Angeles, which I figured they would have. Um, Andy Dalton was pretty much a non-factor in that game. I mean, that first drive, I was like, okay, I mean, this could, I mean, maybe they're going, you know, make me, you know, regret saying some things I might have said. And then he throws a pick in the end zone. So, um, then the Bears, I don't know what Nagy's doing with Justin Fields. They're running some gimmicky plays. But he was two for two. He actually had a rushing touchdown. That, you know, scored half of the Bears' points. But the fact that he put Dalton in there, and Dalton had 206 yards of interception, but it's just, they just couldn't really get anything going. And the running game looks really good with Montgomery. He had over 100 yards, so. But I think it's just proof that Dalton is not the individual I think you want running this franchise. I get it. He's, he's the, the veteran. He's now his third NFL team. He's been in the playoffs. He's got the experience. He's been on winning winning teams up you know, when Cincinnati was good with Marvin Lewis as the head coach. But he has declined immensely. He does show some some good qualities, but then he's proven it. He proved it last night that, yeah, he's definitely not all there. And he's definitely downgraded in, in his ability. And then we have a couple, play, could be some possible playoff previews as well. With Pittsburgh going into Buffalo, and he can have a win there. Big Ben kind of showing that he can do it. Najee Harris was able to, you know, electrify some good runs. The defense showed up. That blocked punt for the touchdown, take the lead, and now it's the lead for good. I mean, that just lets you know that Steelers could be still, that's still a viable team. And I've said they'll get into the playoffs. So I, I don't see that one. I still got Buffalo winning the East. And then the Browns and Chiefs. That was a very good matchup. Baker Mayfield was commanding that game for button three quarters and 98% percentage of the fourth. And he had that one bad throw. One. Where I think he was trying to throw out of the bounds. But as he's going down, he let it go instead of taking the sack, and he got picked off. And it was just like the Baker Mayfield when in his beginning years, just trying to force the ball somewhere. I think he's probably trying to throw it away, but still, you know, it's just one of those things that you don't need to do, especially with a quality team like Kansas City's, that they don't need that one little spark, and it's just that was it. I mean, Kansas City already had the lead by that that point because the putter were just couldn't handle a snap and it's just that's all it was two plays basically just changed that whole whole dramatic uh, uh, dynamics of that game and we could see these two face off again in the playoffs I mean that's highly highly probable I do see both teams making the playoffs this year so quite a good possibility and a couple of you know key games you know the the Crimson Tide reunion up in Fox, Foxborough and Mac Jones was actually leading the Patriots until a fumble, the running. That cost him the game, but Mac Jones has shown his, his leadership abilities. Be able to stay in, the, stay in the pocket, take the hit as he releases the ball to a quality spot. So I think the Patriots in right going in the right position. Uh, Dolphins show that, you know, Tua, prime and ready to go. 
in Philadelphia. Jalen Hurst and that Eagles deep Eagles offense was humming along. Now no, oh, they're taking on taking on Atlanta. So we'll see in the coming weeks how Philadelphia actually pans out. But the way the Giants perform, I think the Eagles may leapfrog the Giants in the East Division. But still not taking it. But then again, you got Washington kind of falling flat because now Fitzpatrick is, you know, Fitz injured. And at least the Cowboys is, you know, the one team on paper that looks good. But with everyone else losing, the Eagles are on top of the East. So this is still a week one NFL. There's still a lot of games to be played, especially as a 17-game season. So who knows what's going to happen towards the end. But, you know, this is some of the recaps of this weekend for – for football, another exciting weekend. Football, we got, you know, of course, Monday Night Football with the Ravens and Raiders. Should be a good one. Kind of see how the Ravens kind of perform with their depleted backfield and see if the Raiders can actually, you know, prove me wrong and actually cover their bets at the table. Well, let me know what you think. Um, I got a few things coming up. You know, to kind of let you know, you know we'll be doing a my own version of a college football poll system. It's kind of like a point system, so I won't have that coming out until about the same time frame the college football playoffs come out. So kind of stay tuned for that. I do have other content I'll be thinking of and trying to get out there. Um, so be mindful. If you think of anything else you want me to talk about, with some things you might want to see me discuss, just leave a comment below. Let me know. Uh, hit like. Subscribe. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Chat Sports Talk. And I'll see you in the next episode.